So like many of you, we have family, friends, and coworkers who have been impacted by the coronavirus. News for Jack's reporter Vic Michelucci, he's been very open about his experience after falling ill. As Florida passes 1 million cases, we wanted Vic's unique perspective now that he's recovered from it. So Vic, you were infected with the coronavirus in July. You called it the sickest you've ever been. Here we are about four months later. Are you still dealing with any long-term effects? And I still stand behind those words that it was the sickest I had ever been in my adult life, Joy and Tark. Every once in a while, I do still have some issues where maybe I'm running or I'm working out and my chest just gets tight or I'm doing something simple like climbing a couple flights of stairs and my heart just races. I am fortunate. I am thankful every single day and I'm certainly not naive to the fact that there are so many other people that had it so much worse. And I think that's the big thing. We don't know how this virus is going to affect us. Now that we've reached this 1 million mark, that's about one in 21 people in the state of Florida that have had or have the coronavirus. That's a lot of people. And I've seen some with very mild symptoms. I've also unfortunately had some friends who have lost their parents, including one whose mother just died within the past couple of days. So Vic, we know that you uh, donated plasma as well to help others who are hospitalized with the virus. What, what was that like and, and have you heard anything, any, anything back from the doctors? So I was able to donate plasma because I did have antibodies. They checked my blood, I'm O positive, so I'm a universal donor. And I gave that plasma, it took about two hours start to finish. It's still unproven, but I felt like it was a good thing for me to do to be able to give back to the community. But there's so many different possible treatments out there that are still under uh, study right now. And we're waiting to find out exactly what's going on there. But when I talk to the doctors, they say, still be careful. We think that you and these other people that have recovered do have some sort of immunity here, but it's just not well known enough. So. Uh, I'm trying to set a good example. I'm trying to, uh, you know, continue to wash my hands, to keep my distance, to wear my mask, to do everything that the CDC recommends, and, and hopefully, you know, make sure that no one else around me gets sick. And I was so th very thankful when I was sick that nobody caught the virus from me personally. Well, Vic, a lot of people we remember really connected with you and reached out to you, sharing their stories of battling COVID-19, and people are still reaching out to you. Mm hmm. Certainly, Joy. And, you know, even now I'm in contact with people that are sick with the coronavirus as we speak. And it was a platform and I was fortunate enough to be able to tell my story. There's a stigma. A lot of people keep it quiet. I decided I wasn't going to make it a secret. I was going to be out there about my journey, about my battle, about my fight. Again, I'm so very fortunate, but I know that there are people suffering. I have a lot of family members in healthcare. They're dealing with people that are in the ICU. Some of, their, some of them are intubated and some have even lost their patients. So we know that this virus is real. We know that we need to continue to take it seriously. It doesn't discriminate. It can affect everyone and it's going to affect them differently. And that's why we have to be so very careful. We can't let our guards down. The holidays are around the corner. We just had Thanksgiving. You know, my Thanksgiving was with my mom, my dad and their new dog. We kept it very small because we wanted to be safe. And we also wanted to set a good example for other people. I don't want to see anyone go through this. Great advice, Vic. We certainly do appreciate you uh, being candid and open about what you experienced.